Hello world, this is Tommy Haywood coming to you from Leesburg, Florida, the lakefront city in Lake County and the Sunshine State. It's 86 degrees on the way to 92. It feel, will feel like 105. This is Tuesday, July the 14th, 2020. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Yesterday we noted that a Christian, according to the scriptures, is one who belongs to Christ because he or she has accepted the call of the gospel when they believed in Jesus as the resurrected Lord in Christ, repented of their sins, and were baptized for remission of their sins. About 3,000 people did this in Acts chapter 2, 36-41. Today we shall note the second of the three occurrences of the term Christian in the New Testament. In Acts 26, the Apostle Paul is making his defense before King Herod Agrippa II at Caesarea. It would be impossible to imagine a starker contrast of characters than that of Paul and Agrippa. King Agrippa was an ungodly and moral man who lived to satisfy his flesh, and Paul was a man of sterling character. He, the contrast is between a good moral man and a grossly immoral one, one who lived to gratify his flesh and one who lived to glorify his Lord. King Agrippa II was the grandson of Herod the Great, the man who tried to kill the baby Jesus when he was born. He was the son of Herod Agrippa I, who killed the Apostle James with a sword and tried unsuccessfully to kill the Apostle Peter, according to Acts chapter 12. King Herod Agrippa II was living in incestuous adultery with his own sister, Bernice. It was a scandal among the Jews and the Gentiles, according to the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. The Herods lived in the cesspool of putridity and sin, and this Herod was no different. As Paul spoke of his conversion to Jesus Christ, Agrippa said to Paul in Acts 26, 28, You almost persuade me to become a Christian. We cannot look at his facial expression nor hear his voice, so we don't know if he was sincere or sarcastic when he made that remark. But one thing is certain. We know Paul was sincere when he said in verse 29, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become both almost and altogether such as I am, except these chains. Paul had every intention of persuading Herod Agrippa, who had Jewish blood and knew the Old Testament prophets, to become a Christian. He never tried to disguise what he was trying to do. So adding this to what we learned yesterday, a Christian is one who belongs to Christ, having accepted the call of the gospel according to Acts 11.26, and who lives as a disciple of Christ following Christ's teaching. This is a far cry from Webster's definition that one who professes belief in the teaching of Jesus Christ is a Christian. Jesus put it like this in John 8, 31 and 32, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Thus, to be a Christian that the Lord accepts, one must continue in his word. Being baptized into Christ does not mean that one has his ticket to heaven punch. It's not the ending point, but the starting point of the Christian's life. To truly follow Christ, one must deny ungodliness and worldly lust and live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, according to Titus 2, 11, and 12. Paul stated it like this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Many people who satisfy Webster's definition of, definition of a Christian as one who professes belief in the teachings of Jesus Christ are not willing to live by what Christ teaches about how one becomes a Christian and about what a Christian must do. They are unwilling to go that far. They are unwilling to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Many people want to continue in their sins, such as the sin of fornication, or adultery, or homosexuality, or lying, or gossiping, or being disobedient to parents, and so forth and so forth. You can just go on and on and on. Paul never knew about Webster's Dictionary, but he knew about the gospel of Christ, and he was conscientiously, courageously, and unashamedly proclaiming it, even before kings who were living in sin. He believed with every atom of his being that the gospel of Christ was the power of God to salvation to everyone who believed it, according to Romans 1 and verse 16. Paul was shackled with chains. Agrippa was shackled to his sins. Paul's desire for Agrippa and for everyone else who heard him was that Herod would be just exactly like he was except for his chains. Could you say that you desire that everyone you meet was just exactly like you? Only if you had completely surrendered your will to Christ and were sincerely seeking to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. It's a lifelong, joyful journey. 
Let us not be distracted by the words of men who seek to tickle ears and soothe consciences by defining words so broadly that most anyone could qualify rather than to save souls. Until next time, remember to search the scriptures, to serve the Lord and to share the gospel with others. It's a message that's too good to keep. This is Tommy Haywood wishing for you a very pleasant good day.